Welcome to our Smart Energy videocast, where we touch on various interesting and relevant topics with the aim at sharing insight and understanding of the matter. My name is Otke Guðmundsson, and together with my colleague Janer Thorsen, we will introduce how the Copenhagen District Heating System supports and benefits from sector coupling, and at the same time effectively decarbonizes the heat supply in Copenhagen. This session builds on the general sector coupling videocast, which we encourage you to watch. So, modern technologies and diversification of energy generation has led to a vastly different energy landscape compared to the past. Sector coupling and integration are terms for connecting and integrating various actors in the energy system to take advantage of synergies. The most known and applied sector coupling is co-generation of heat and power. Here, district heating has a couple of desirable attributes for sector coupling. First, extreme ability to decouple supply and demand. Second, the system can range from megawatts to gigawatts. And third, energy quality requirement is low, meaning we can utilize low temperature heat sources. Now, let's take a look on the Copenhagen district heating system. In Copenhagen, waste incinerations are an important part of the circular economy where their future role is to dispose of unrecyclable waste in an environmentally friendly way. And at the same time, they recover the energy of the waste in form of electricity and heat. Waste incinerators are typically base load heat providers for district heating systems. And in Copenhagen, there are three waste incinerations that are coupled to the district heating system. But that is not only the waste supply. Also wastewater treatment plants which are commonly seen as major energy consumers, provide fantastic opportunities for smart energy systems. There are essentially three opportunities that can be exploited. First, during the wastewater treatment process, there is a considerable biogas production, which can be used in a CHP plant. Second, in addition to the biogas, there is a solid biomass, which can be used as a fuel in a heat plant. And third, the wastewater is a stable heat source for heat pumps, which can be operated in relation to the condition of the power sector. In Copenhagen, there are two wastewater treatment plants that are coupled to the district heating system. Traditionally, the power and heat sector have had symbiotic relationship with via CHP plants, where district heating has used the waste heat from the CHP as a base load in the system and by that ensure both cost-effective power generation, heat generation, and high fuel efficiency. In the future energy system, with a large amount of renewable power generation, the role of CHP plants will diminish, although they will still be important as backup power generators. In Copenhagen, there are six CHP plants connected to the district heating system. Originally, these plants were fossil-based, but in recent years, four of them have been modified for operating with biomass, and the remaining two are only operated as peak load plants. With the transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy sources, the district heating is refocusing and diversifying its heat generation facilities. And in this respect, sustainable electrification plays an important role. In Copenhagen, the district heating system has embraced this new reality and is using utility-sized heat pumps to co-generate heat and cold. By utilizing the waste heat from cooling of malls, commercial buildings, data centers and industry processes in the district heating system, the heat pump efficiencies become exceptionally high. This coupling of the heating, cooling and the power sector together unlocks large opportunities to take advantage of synergies between these sectors. For example, first, take advantage of load shifting potentials in the thermal sector to avoid operating the heat pumps in peak power consumption periods, which is very smart. Second, to operate the heat pumps during low cost power periods and avoid operating in high cost power periods. And third, by this offer balancing services to the power grid. The Copenhagen district heating system has 10 co-generation heat pumps installed today. Now in temperate climates like we have in Copenhagen, the annual heating demand is vastly larger than the cooling demand, especially during the winter period. 
That means that during the winter period, we will need heat pumps operating in a heating only mode. Under these situations, district heating offers a significant advantage over building level heat pumps. Because district heating level heat pumps can be installed strategically to assess favorable temperature of the heat sources to ensure high COP year round. These heat pumps provide the same services and benefits to the power sector as in the co-generation mode of heating and cooling. Copenhagen has seven heat pump plants installed today and more will come in the future. With increasing power generation from fluctuating renewables, the frequency of excessive power generation will increase. This excessive power generation is generally occurring for relatively short periods and can be very high. For instance, in Denmark, the renewable power generation has at times been double of the power demand, which firstly can be problematic for the power system and secondly generally lead to very low or even negative power prices. Electric boilers are exceptionally good at capturing excess renewable power and the heat generated can either be stored in thermal storages for a later use or it can displace fuel consumption in other heat generation facilities. Additionally, electric boilers and district heating are ideal for providing balancing service to the power grid, which will become increasingly important for the future energy system. Copenhagen has installed three electric boiler plants and more will likely be installed as the renewable power generating capacity increases. With all of those sources available, we lack one key element, and that is thermal energy storages, as they are ideal to boost the possibilities for taking advantages of sector coupling. Thermal storages offer very energy efficient energy storage capabilities, ranging from hours to days to months and even between the seasons. While traditionally these large thermal storages have been used in combination with CHP plants to decouple the power and the heat generation, their role will only increase in the future. In Copenhagen, more than six thermal energy storages have been installed and they serve the whole district heating system. Now, the last brick in the thermal generation in Copenhagen district heating are peak and reserve boilers. These are mostly natural gas biogas or bio-oil fired. These boilers are distributed around the system to ensure exceptionally high operational stability. The boilers are only used during peak load periods and in case of emergencies. For instance, replacing other sources if they go offline. As thermal generation becomes more and more diversified due to sector coupling, transition from fossil fuels and greater utilization of thermal energy storages, the operational hours of the peak load boilers will become less and less in the future. Now, with the sector coupling and the multi-source operation, Copenhagen District Heating can continuously switch between fuels to fulfill its goals. And that results in exceptionally secure and reliable heat supply. Extreme ability to handle supply disruptions as an example, that can be the natural gas crisis to the, to the war in Ukraine. And it's also environmentally friendly heat supply with very low pollution levels from the heat generation. It has local job creation and retains energy spending money in the local economy. It also has high interaction with other sectors, such as the waste sector, the power sector and the industry sector. And all of those leads to an affordable heating for the residents of Copenhagen. Now, to wrap up, let's go through the key learning experience from Copenhagen. In the long-term perspective, heat planning has been the key to Copenhagen district heating success, both in terms of achieving environmental goals, as well as for providing affordable and reliable heating to the residents of the city. A good heat planning will enable the city planners to address future developments in a sustainable way, as it should consider questions such as how will the city develop in the future? Where will the residential areas be? What about the commercial areas? And where to locate the industry areas? And what can we expect from building renovations? For example, in relation to future heating demands and perhaps cooling demands and changes in temperature requirements. Also, what energy sources do we expect in the future and where to locate them? And what are the energy goals we want to fulfill at the end? Heat planning and district heating 
they play a fundamental role for cities to contribute to local and global climate goals, such as minimize primary energy consumption by maximizing energy efficiency, minimize air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions, provide fast and sustainable transition from fossil fuels to green energy sources. As for providing affordable heating, then Copenhagen has, due to its multi-source district heating, proved that climate goals actually go hand in hand with providing residents with cost-stable and affordable heating. As a bonus, district heating systems create local jobs. They retain energy spending money in the local economy, and, and that improves the business case for the energy intense industries. Those were some insights on district heating and sector coupling in Copenhagen. Thank you for watching and hope to have you on board again.